and they go to the main building of the park. There's this big, cool-looking building, and they walk through the doors, and there's a big Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton right there in the front, and it's standing, and it's like it's going to eat this other skeleton. They're, they pose the skeletons like they do in museums, and they start to walk up the stairs, and they go into this little theater, and they start to watch a cartoon that shows how they made the dinosaurs in this park. So the reason your eyes are the color they are, what makes your nose come out as far as it does or as, or as not far as it does, if you have a nose like this or a nose like this, your DNA makes that all happen. When you grow up, the way that you're growing up is because your DNA shows what the cells are supposed to do. Cells are little tiny things. In your hand, there's all kinds of cells. There's skin cells and muscle cells and tendon cells and bone cells. All kinds of cells make your whole body. And the DNA is even smaller than the cells and tells the cells where to grow. So like when your fingernails grow, that's the DNA saying to keep growing and where to grow and how to grow so that you don't have a fingernail on your knuckle or a fingernail on your elbow. If you didn't have DNA, your body wouldn't know how to grow. Dinosaurs had DNA. And there's a little mosquito and goes and it lands on a dinosaur and goes with its little sticker and it starts to drink the blood of the dinosaur. And it fills up the back end of the mosquito. Bloop, bloop. And then the mosquito goes and lands on a branch and there's sap dripping down the branch of the tree and the sap goes over the mosquito and the sap turns into a fossil. And Hammond has a cane because he's an old man. He's an old man with a white beard. He's kind of like Santa Claus, but he has a cane and on the top of his cane is a yellow glass thing, but it's not glass, it's amber. It's actually a rock, and inside is the mosquito. And what they did was they drilled down through the amber, and then they stuck a needle down through the amber, and they sucked out the blood of the mosquito in the amber. And in the blood that's in the mosquito is dinosaur DNA. And that's how the park grew the dinosaurs. Well, as they're watching the cartoon, it starts to turn. The whole room goes... And the room is turning, and as it turns, there's a glass window, and they see the lab where all the scientists in their white coats are there, and they're making dinosaurs. And it's absolutely, Dr. Grant can't believe his eyes, and he wants to go look, but the thing keeps on turning because they're going to show everything. It's the tour of the park, and Hammond says, well, it's kind of a ride. It doesn't seem like a very fun ride. You just sit and rotate around to see the, there's the computer room. There is the janitorial closet. This is where we make the food that you're going to eat later. The kitchen. Here they're washing the dishes that we're going to use later. This is where we keep the vacuums. They're going to show all of that. Dr. Grant doesn't want to, so he pushes the little... There's a thing like on a roller coaster comes down. They go... And they push it off. And they run to go and see in the lab. They've got to see the lab because there were eggs. There were eggs at a little table all set up like that with a light and everything to, to incubate the eggs and get the dinosaurs to grow. They want to see that. Oh my goodness, there's dinosaurs being hatched. So they run in there. There's a scientist there named Dr. Wu, and he comes up with his clipboard and says, oh, you're just in time. And they look, and there's a baby hatching. There's one of the eggs is going, and it cracks open, and they help it open up the shell, which you shouldn't really do. If you've ever had chickens, you don't help the chickens out of their shell. This is very important that they get through their shell. It helps them grow. But anyway, and they open up the little egg and they pull out the baby. And it goes, it makes little baby dinosaur noises. And it has little claws and little teeth. And Dr. Grant, who studies what kind of dinosaur? Velociraptor. That's right. He studies Velociraptor. He's looking at this baby dinosaur and he recognizes the shape of its head and the tail and the foot with the claw. And he says, what kind of dinosaur is this? And the guy with the clipboard, Dr. Wu, he says, oh, it's, uh, it's Velociraptor. And Dr. Grant looks at Hammond and says, you bred raptors. 
Dr. Grant, in his studies of velociraptors, knows that they would be absolutely terrible to make in real life. It's a good thing some dinosaurs are extinct. Velociraptors, they can run as fast as a car on the freeway. Um, and they can jump very high because they're light. Tyrannosaurus rex wouldn't jump, but a velociraptor can jump. They jump high, and they have very big claws on their toes. Even though they're a smaller dinosaur, they can do a lot more damage than a Tyrannosaurus rex, and they're smarter than a Tyrannosaurus rex, and they're scarier than a Tyrannosaurus rex. And here at this zoo called Jurassic Park, they have raptors. So they go to see the raptors being fed. The way that they feed the raptors is really, really dangerous. The raptors kind of, they're not really part of the rest of the zoo. They're in a cage that has big, thick walls. The walls are concrete walls like this. And they have barbed wire at the top and electricity going through the wires. And anyway, that's caged all the way over the top because they jump. We don't see any of the raptors because they're all down in the under the leaves. There's a jungle inside the cage, and they live under the jungle. They have a cow on a crane, and they're lifting the cow up, and they put it over the top of the cage, and they open up the cage, and they put the cow down through. Down under the leaves, the cow goes, going, moo, moo. And it goes down under, and the gate closes. Make sure nobody jumps out. And then all they hear is the... <laughs> and the raptors eat the cow. Also, there was a guy who told them that the, the raptors should all be destroyed. His name's Muldoon. And he's, he's a African safari hunter guy. He knows a lot about lions, tigers, cheetahs, leopards, dangerous animals like that. They hired him to come and make sure the velociraptors don't get out of their cage. So Muldoon, keep him in mind. Muldoon's a pretty neat guy. They go to lunch and nobody can really eat because um, they feel bad. Why do they feel bad? Because they're on an island with dinosaurs. And dinosaurs haven't been around for millions of years. And now there's dinosaurs. And they're really dangerous. And you're at lunch and you don't feel like eating because your tummy feels bad. Hammond says, wait until you see the park. Wait until you see the rest of the zoo. You're going to love Jurassic Park. It's a great park. It's so much fun. I made this place and you're all going to love it. Just, just wait and see. And so they go out from lunch. And that's when the grandkids come. Hammond's little, his grandkids are there. Kids. And it's um, Tim. And Lex, Lexi. More smoke. Hold on. <laughs> we need atmosphere. Because we got to pretend we're in the jungle. Right now we're in my living room, but we have to pretend, okay, this island, there's all kinds of plants that didn't used to live on the earth, but that they made those two out of the DNA from the mosquito. See, that doesn't make sense. The mosquito wouldn't be chewing on, did they find caterpillars in amber and somehow extract DNA from the caterpillars that ate the leaves a long time ago? I don't know. Let's move on to the next part of the story. The middle. Yes, I love this story. Now, Tim and Lexi, 